Welcome back to Music Kingdom. While I review a variety of music on this channel, the genre of metal specifically has been a lot of fun for me to explore. And while I've done numerous songs by numerous bands, I couldn't help but realize I've only reviewed two songs by Tool, not counting the full album review I did for Undertow. And so, due to popular demand from comments, in this video we will be listening to, giving a music theory breakdown for, and blindly reviewing 46 and 2 by Tool. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, my name is Francis. If you are a fellow nerd for music such as myself and you appreciate not just reactions but in-depth reviews and analysis of songs, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And of course, I'm excited to announce, given the abundance of song requests I get on this channel, too many to keep up with, by the way, I've finally decided to start doing personalized song reviews. In a nutshell, you tell me which song you think I should check out, and I send you a quick video of my initial thoughts in a grade out of 10. Link is in the description, don't hesitate. All right, now before we give the song a listen, first let's briefly talk 46 and 2 by Tool. 46 and 2 is from Tool's second studio album titled Anema, released in 1996. Anema debuted at number 2 on the Billboard 200 chart upon its initial release, selling 148,000 copies in its first week, and was certified triple platinum by the RIAA in 2003. The album appeared on several lists of the best albums of 1996, including that of Kerrang! and Terrorizer. The album titled track Anema won the Grammy Award for Best Metal Performance in 1998, and in 2003, it was ranked the sixth most influential album of all time by Kerrang. Rolling Stone would also list the album at number 18 on its list of the 100 greatest metal albums of all time. The song 46 and 2 itself was released as the fourth single from the album, and in March of 2023, Rolling Stone ranked 46 and 2 at number 53 on their 100 greatest heavy metal songs of all time list. The song's lyrics are centered around the premise that humans would deviate from the current state of human DNA which contains 44 autosomes and two sex chromosomes, into the next step of evolution that would likely result in human DNA having 46 autosomes and two sex chromosomes, leaving a disharmonious state. Additionally, the lyrics refer to the desire to experience change through the shadow, an idea that represents the parts of one's psyche and identity that one hates, fears, and represses, which exists as a recurring theme in the work of Carl Jung, which I've gotta say, subjectively speaking, I think is really cool. If perhaps you've watched my two other tool reviews, you'll know that in my spare time, recreationally, I love reading and learning about mysticism, metaphysics, spirituality, philosophy. I'm just kind of a nerd for it, which is why it was kind of love at first sight when I was introduced to the work of tool. And I've got to say, a lot of that stuff I like to read does talk about the evolution of humanity, especially from a point of consciousness. In addition to that, a lot of current new agey stuff does talk about working on the shadow self. So, I mean, whether it's your thing or not, I just think it's cool that nearly 30 years ago, Tool was already writing music about this stuff before it became perhaps as mainstream as it is today. Something else worth mentioning that I consider a bit of a disclaimer is that I am aware that 46 and 2 is to some extent a live staple by Tool, but just subjectively speaking, I like to familiarize myself with the studio version first so that then I can go and appreciate the live rendition even more later on. Otherwise, at long last, with all that out of the way, it's finally time we give the song a listen. And just a heads up, I will be pausing a couple times to share my thoughts, but ultimately to avoid any copyright strikes. And of course, as always, be sure to stick around after the song for a music theory breakdown from our expert, and then we're gonna divide the song into specific categories, grading them each, averaging them out, and arriving at an overall score. I always appreciate a slow introduction or build-up. I like how carefully curated it is. Like you keep waiting for it to smack, but they're keeping it tasteful. And with headphones, you can appreciate the production. 
the elements of percussion, the drums kind of aesthetically there. Thoughts so far, as mentioned, a very tasteful introduction. Speaking for myself, I kept waiting for it to pop or to explode, and then I realized it just became the natural groove and rhythm of the song. And that's something I've come to really like about Tool, as opposed to some of the other metal songs that I've heard, and granted they are kind of like apples and oranges, I'm not trying to put them under the exact same umbrella, but even still, a lot of the other metal songs I've heard, albeit in perhaps different subgenres, they beat you over the head a lot with aggression, and I, I realize that that's the appeal. Whereas I've noticed with Tool, they really know when to beat you over the head with aggression, which also means, naturally, they know when to keep it soft. And it's very effective because you know that at a certain point in the song, it's going to get much harder. And so that contrast, in my opinion, is very good for keeping the listener engaged and keeping the song fresh. Another thing I like is that his soft vocals actually sound good. I feel like some other metal vocalists may have insane belting ability and insane power in their voice, but their softer voice isn't necessarily pleasing to the ears or otherwise very good or pretty. So with regards to Tool, that is something for me that is just very welcome and refreshing. All that said, there is still so much song left and I'm excited to see where it goes. There it is. Thoughts at this point, I really enjoy the ride, for lack of a better word, or perhaps the journey that this song is. If you were to compare it to a roller coaster, I would say it's not the roller coaster that just makes you shit yourself the entire time, nor is it the kitty ride. It's that one ride that you can just ride again and again and again because it has those moments 
but otherwise it's just very enjoyable. Let's ditch the roller coaster analogy though. Something that I'm also really realizing with this song is the evolution just from their debut album Undertow to this. As mentioned, I've listened to the entirety of Undertow since one of my videos was a full album review. And while I thought it was good, it was still obviously Tool in their infancy, figuring themselves out. And so with this album being what, 1996, just in three years to make such a jump as artists, that to me is very impressive and it's very evident in a song like this. And as usual, with a song like this, I am very interested to see how they decide to conclude it. With Tool, I never know when to start or stop jamming. At least on the first listen. As tasteful as the song is executed, it's also very simple. Okay, I spoke too soon. Okay, I have mixed thoughts. All right, initial impressions before we go to the expert's corner and before grading the song. When I mentioned mixed thoughts, it's because I wasn't quite sure what to expect and I'm not someone who likes to hold a band or artist to the standard of their other work, but that is kind of the trap I fell into when I listened to this song. What I mean by that is a song like Lateralis or Parable Parabola, even some of the songs from Undertow that I became very partial to, subjectively speaking, I just felt were better. But at the same time, Tool being Tool, being the creative geniuses that they are, it's not like this song wasn't impressive or enjoyable either. I do wanna make that clear. As mentioned, I did enjoy the ride that this song is and I would listen to it again but subjectively I'm not sure if I would add it to my own personal library. And while I am picking my brain trying to figure out why, sometimes it's just hard to articulate the reason. And so while I get the gears going regarding categories like production, lyrics, vocals, originality, etc. In the meantime, let's go to the experts corner for a music theory breakdown and to see how he grades the song's composition. Welcome to the Experts Corner. This is 46 and 2 by Tool, and I'm here to give it a composition score. This song's in the time signature of 4-4, mostly, and it's in the key of D minor. So I want to start off by talking about something that I found pretty interesting, and that's that despite the fact that the song is in D minor, there are a couple of moments that contradict that. In the main riff, you have something that's just a variation of something like... There's a part where it kind of goes like this. This is an F sharp note, which makes it D major, not D minor. The same thing happens later on in what sounds like the chorus, where the vocalist sings like da da da. So you've got D major chords present in a song that's in D minor, which is super cool, not at all common. It was one of the first things that stuck out to me when I first listened to it. When I was listening to this song for the first time, I was already thinking it was gonna get a pretty high score based on just the first half of it. Those riffs, while pretty repetitive, they do change it up and they're all very intricate and they all have to know exactly which bar they're on because they're not all the same. But having said that, the score got even higher as I got to about the four and a half minute mark 
where it went into the 7-8 riff. And for those of you who have watched this channel before, you know 7-8 is my favorite time signature. It goes into a 7-8 version of that main riff, and then you have the drums come in with the most sexy, syncopated groove I have heard in a long time. In fact, I just kind of rewound that part like four times because I just loved the syncopated groove on the 7-8 riff. Overall, I think this is a great composition. On the surface, it does sound like a very repetitive song, but underneath it's something that is meticulously crafted, intricate, and rhythmically brilliant. This one's gonna get an eight out of 10 from me. Back to you, Francis. A very special thank you to our expert for providing a music theory breakdown and giving the song's composition a great eight out of 10. And now it's time to divide the song into four more categories, grading them each, averaging them out, and arriving at an overall score. Starting off with the category of production, I'm inclined to give it a very good, but not quite great, seven and a half out of 10. As mentioned in this song, there are moments when you can really appreciate how well done the production is. Pretty much, however, just to the extent of mixing. A song of this nature is simply not going to have immense sound effects like Pink Floyd or ELO or Michael Jackson, nor is it going to have one of the most disgusting beats like a 90s hip hop song. So in my opinion, a song like this having a very good production but not quite great has less to do with production savvy or ability and more to do with the genre of the song. As mentioned, mentioned a bunch of times in the metal reviews that I do, when it comes to production, typically it's going to be more minimalistic, it's going to be more simple. That way it's easier for the band to go and replicate live. So while I do feel this song's production does have its merits, it's most certainly not a 3 out of 10, a 5 out of 10, a 6 out of 10, a 7 and a half is good. That being said, I do think it's fair not to go any higher with the number, simply because productions that get an 8, an 8.5, a 9, a 9.5, a 10 are just going to be otherworldly, or in other words, more complex than a song of this nature. All right, moving on to the category of lyrics. I will be giving them a very great 8.5 out of 10. For starters, I mean, what a subject matter to begin with. All the things I mentioned earlier about either metaphysics, philosophy, spirituality, DNA, evolution. Subjectively speaking, yes, I am such a nerd for that, the same way I'm a nerd for music. However, I do think it's important to separate the subject matter of a song with how well written the lyrics are. For example, you could have a song that is about something so unique, so profound, but not quite beautifully written. And on the other hand, you could have a subject matter that is very simple, very basic, something we've all heard a billion times, but penned in such an artistic, talented, beautiful, poetic way. Take a song like Lateralis, for example, where the lyrics are not only well-written, but they're also written according to the Fibonacci sequence and time signatures. That is an example of otherworldly. That is an example of a masterclass. Now, don't get me wrong. I do feel the lyrics are very well-written. Otherwise, I would not have given them such a high score. But regardless of what they're about, are they some of the best penned lyrics of all time in the history of music, regardless of genre? No. Moving on to the category of vocals, I will be giving them a great eight out of 10. To be quite honest with you guys, I was inclined to give the vocals in this song maybe a six and a half or a seven, which is pretty good. But of course we do have to weigh the rare yet evident moments in this song when he really showcases what he has. Unfortunately, however, they are so far and few between and also not tremendously impressive either to where I feel like I can bump up the score just a little bit, but not necessarily anything earth shattering. Simply put, a majority of the song has nice vocals and parts of the song has great vocals. And while I most certainly do not doubt his ability, having heard other songs by Tool, this is simply not one of the vocal masterclasses that Tool has to offer, which is okay because sometimes that's not the point of the song. All right, arriving at our final category of originality, I'm inclined to give it a very rare, excellent, nine out of 10. Something that I feel should always be taken into account with music, if applicable, would be context. And while yes, I acknowledge metal has been around for a very long time, whether we're talking about Sabbath, whether we're talking about Rainbow, whether we're talking about Metallica, Iron Maiden, we have to remember they weren't doing what Tool was doing. They or anybody else were not writing about what Tool was writing about. They weren't composing the way that Tool was composing. While I'm no expert on Tool and while I'm no metalhead, so forgive anything 
something that is perhaps ignorant. To my knowledge, when Tool arrived at the scene, they most certainly changed things. And so with a song like this to be so advanced in so many ways and for it to be 27 years old, to me is just remarkably impressive and needs to be acknowledged. Would Tool, in my opinion, come out with even more advanced work in the 2000s? Absolutely, but to already be at this level of artistry on their second album almost 30 years ago screams originality, in my opinion. In my albeit limited knowledge, I would say they pioneered the genre, they pioneered a style, and evidently were years ahead of their time. Nine out of 10. So now if we add it all up, including the expert's composition score and average it out, 46 and two by Tool from their second studio album titled Anema, released in 1996, gets a great 8.2 out of 10. To be honest, if we circle back to what I said about mixed thoughts, the 8.2 kind of reflects that because while it is undeniably great, there are certain things, perhaps intangibles, that just keep it from getting to that level of, oh wow. Again, it's hard to articulate, but some songs just have that it factor and other songs, albeit objectively great, might not. Ultimately, however, that is just my own subjective opinion. So in the comments down below, let me know if you think I am right on the money, batshit crazy, or somewhere in between, as well as what other songs by Tool or whoever else you would like for this channel to review next. As mentioned, if you are a fellow nerd for music, such as myself, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you feel like there's a song that I should check out and you'd like a quick personalized review, click the link in the description below. This has been another edition of Music Kingdom. Thank you so much for listening with me, and I'll look forward to jamming with you in the next one.